everyone. It is Friday here on One Life Radio. This is Bernadette with Dr. Jeremy Webster, and Danny Miles is back. He wasn't here with us on Tuesday. Danny, Danny, are you in there? <coughs> don't get me started. <laughs> yeah, Do and not then, get me started. Yeah, I forgot about that. Don't get him, don't get him started. It's just an extension of what we were talking about yesterday yep. about what happens when you don't have your phone, can yep. you survive? And I'm sitting here for the, the two hours I was here this morning, and I thought, I cannot survive because I need the phone. Yeah. So I had to rush back home, and I made it here within two minutes to spare. See, and, and but see, so yesterday that was our that was our topic about texting, emailing, the addiction to the internet, to our phones, our i everything's. You know, uh, and I could not survive a healthy day without my phone. Damn it. Yep. And he couldn't. Stress he went, free, Doctor Jeremy. Yep. Stress free, right? <laughs> it's a miracle that we survived the eighties. Uh, how did how did we how make did it we through? the that. 70s and the 80s and the 60s without them i know it it, uh, it makes me think of the it? first cell phone um that i bought as a gift for um um uh my ex-husband it was it, it was it was the size of my briefcase yeah. i mean it <laughs> it was huge and i remember i remember it was like such a big deal like hey i'm calling you from my cell phone <laughs> you know we were on the boat or something you know and it was just it was just <laughs> hey, hysterical I've got, I've got a big brick still at home i should bring it in i should, you know i really do want to get that thing connected and walk around with it you know the old uh, miami vice brick uh telephones <laughs> or a bag phone yeah just walk around say, with my, that act really cool my parents had this bag phone in their car <laughs> and it was like if we took a trip two hours they they would never be calling these people but as soon as we got in the car it's like hook the phone up i got to call so and so like yeah. why are you gonna call him oh just just no reason just hey yeah i'm Talking from my car. They yeah. thought it was the coolest thing. They you just know had to what make I want to do is I want to get a bag phone and put that around my other shoulder while I'm walking my dog. Right, Maura? Yeah, I was just going to say. <laughs> wouldn't that be, wouldn't yeah. that be tragically hip? <laughs> yeah, that would be hip. And how can we use all these mass communications to get through to people to spay and neuter your doggone pets? Well, you could have you could always have a phone and you could connect it to your dog's to like a little vest you have on your dog and then you can put it on speakerphone and call it and say, hey, everybody, spay and neuter. Spay and neuter, Sorry, spay and neuter. Silly. Yeah, and so or your so, ringtone could say "Stay a neuter, stay a neuter, stay a neuter." Yeah, really. Well, you know, I was thinking this morning as I was driving here about the uh, upcoming furball. What's the date of the furball this year? The furball is going to be September twenty second. Oh wow, that's coming right up. Yes, it is right around the corner, and we are just about to sell out. So awesome! Oh my gosh, everybody, hurry if you want to buy tickets. Well, you know what? It's a really fun event. Is the theme? Is it still Las Vegas? Uh, uh, yes. ga- ga- okay, the gambling, which was really a lot of fun last year. Adrift was one of the sponsors. Um, I've always uh, been behind the SPCA of North Texas. They do a tremendous job educating people and and help save animals, get them off the street, so we don't have to watch them suffer. But uh, they, the the fur ball. Uh, for those of you that don't know what it is, is a gala, an annual gala. It's their big fundraiser. It's a lot of fun. Uh, the tickets are a uh, hundred dollars a piece. More, one hundred and seventy-five dollars each. Okay. Um, or a table of ten is fifteen hundred, and really, it's a blast because Elvis is there. He is serenading the crowd. He oh, last Elvis! Year, yeah, last year Elvis <laughs> passed out the little. What are those things like that go around Elvis's neck, like the little sweat? mop things that are that actually Elvis always had <laughs> so I mean this our Elvis is not sweaty and gross he is wonderful is he and is he a local he is, guy he is he's a local guy he is amazing he is Elvis oh my goodness young Elvis so, or old Elvis um this is white jumpsuit with rhinestones Elvis okay oh gosh I don't yes. like that Elvis I did, Bad Elvis. <laughs> I did I dated an Elvis impersonator for a little while but he was the young he was the young Elvis, young Elvis. oh my goodness well yeah Elvis there showgirls are going to be there we'll have all of the gambling uh which of course uh, not for real money but people can purchase more uh, uh chips so they can keep gambling and of course all of those donations go back to the SPCA of Texas uh we're going to have an amazing live auction i mean full packages with wine that's that's always our most popular one i uh, bought it last year yeah, i'm the one that i bought the wine last year i still have some wine. it's delicious surprise, wine. surprise. <laughs> i mean fabulous trips um, incredible sports packages some of the the sporting event packages like include tickets like box seats for this and sweet tickets for that and limo rides and nights at hotels and dinners around town at all the most wonderful restaurants so this is one cool uh, live auction that we're going to have. And then, of course, a delicious dinner. Who can say no? It's a lot of fun. I know we had a blast last year. We had a, we had a table. I think we had two tables last year. We were one of your big sponsors because, yes. uh-huh. as Thanks. I said, it's important to get behind something you believe in. And, and, 
And so I speak with my feet. Well, we appreciate you for that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, because right. the proceeds from this event help us rescue and heal and find homes for thousands of animals in North Texas every year. So this is this event is one of our, like you said, Bernadette, it's one of our big ones. This it is, is a big gala, and it's, you know, people can wear, a, men can wear a tuxedo if they want, but more guys are going to wear, like, Vegas fun stuff. We had some Elvis, lots of other Elvises who were guests last year and the year before. Yeah, I remember um, that. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> yes. And then we also um, have, uh, as usual, um, you know, delicious, fun things. Even at the end of the night, we have a candy bar to send everyone home. And I don't mean like a chocolate bar, although that would also be awesome. But lots of different kinds of candies and popcorns. Mm-hmm. So as you leave, you get a sweet treat to take you home. That's right. And I think of my good friend, Aaron, Mc- Aaron McBride, or Aaron, um, oh my gosh. I, my, uh, good friend. I know. I just, as soon as I said it, I, I uh that, okay, <laughs> forget. Yeah. Help Great me. friend. He's Great an awesome friend. friend. Stop it! So You're making close. me nervous. Now I've got now I've got brain farteritis, Danny. Is he on your phone? No. <laughs> is it Aaron McBriar? Aaron McBriar. Thank you. I, I went to say McBride, and I'm like, wait a minute, McBriar. Aaron McBriar and Matt McBriar. Okay, they were there last year. They were awesome. They're huge supporters. Our Dallas Cowboys uh, kicker, mm-hmm. you know, uh, Matt McBriar. He and his mm-hmm. wife. They're huge supporters of the SPC. Former kicker. Well, former kicker. Well, he'll always be part. Of, he'll always be part of the team. So, but but anyway, there's a lot of great people that attend the event. A lot of great people. Yes, and it, it's super fun. It's just a fun night for everybody, and it's just again going to be a blast. Um, so yeah, we hope everyone comes out. And like I said, really, I've, I got the report that we are we're just probably a few days away from selling out at the rate the tickets are going. So if people want to come, they got to hurry. That's awesome. That is awesome news, especially in this. Uh, in this uh, environment that we're in financially, you know, everybody's kind of hurting a little bit, I think. So, um, well, so tell us, give us some more statistics for people out there that don't understand just how great of a problem the the euthanasia rate is in this country, and especially here in DFW. I love that statistic that you put out there. Oh, my, the one about how many people have yes. to adopt? So, yes. Yeah, I always say this, but I really, I think it is so important to repeat over and over for sure. The only way that every single pet in this country could find a home is that if every person from birth to 75 years old, I mean everybody, would adopt seven dogs a day every single day of their entire lives. I mean, you fill up your house in one day, and then, oh, here comes seven more the next day. So we've got to spay and neuter. We have absolutely have to spay and neuter, vaccinate, treat our pets with love and respect, and um, give them you know, that, that love that they give us so generously. Yeah, and and it does. It you know, if, believe me, if there weren't people out there that were all over this, our streets would be full of homeless animals. You wouldn't believe yeah. how many there would be out there. There's, there's instead, Bertie's backyard is full of animals, <laughs> <laughs> and I think there's still room for that pony. No, I only or I that only... donkey. <laughs> and we, we we see seven more donkeys in the last uh, couple of days. So we have more donkeys. Oh my god! Oh no! And what about Humble? Is or, or Bumble? Is, Bumble. Bumble is still waiting for a home. Oh man! I know, poor Jeez. Bumble. Poor Bumble. All right. Well, we will put the word out there as we do every week, hoping that anyone out there listening is is up for an adoption and nothing else. Get your pets spayed and neutered. Maura, thank you. Have a great weekend. You are listening to One Life Radio here on eleven ninety. Nobody. You are listening to One Life Radio here on 1190. I think I have a little ADD today, a little ADHD, <laughs> which is our subject. And you can laugh about that, Danny, if you want. Uh, so today, Something along the line. <laughs> something's up with my brain. Well, then you panic when you do that. You know, when you forget something that you, you know you know, and then you're like, oh, my gosh, it's so embarrassing. So anyway, so today our subject is ADD and ADHD, medications and natural solutions. So, Dr. Webster, this is a... This is a huge subject. There are so many people out there that want to know about this. So many people that their children are suffering from it, um, that don't really don't, they don't know what to do. They don't know really what's the best choice. No parent wants to put their child on any regular medication. Well, you would think that, but some are, some are all, all more willing to, uh, to throw their kids on the, on the Ridlin or whatever it takes to get them to perform a little bit better. So I wouldn't say that all no, that all parents don't want to put their, their child on a medication. The problem is I think a lot of parents are completely willing to put their parent, their kids well, on a medication. Well, I just mean in their heart of hearts, you know. Well, maybe so. That's what I mean. You know, maybe like so. in their heart of hearts, you want your child to not have to rely on a medication to to function well. 
Right. I would I would hope not. I hope parents would understand that putting putting kids on these medications is no different than a uh, a Wall Street stockbroker turning to cocaine to to boost his ability to focus and perform, you know, the the long long hard hours or the rigors of the job. Um what happens in the long run? Mm-hmm. Burnout. Well, and we we listen to kids. our listeners. A listener, Liz, asked that we cover this topic. She wanted to hear what you had to say. So let's identify first what this is. So you've got the ADD and you've got ADHD. Okay. Tell us the difference. A- yeah, ADD is a uh, attention deficit disorder. ADHD is attention deficit with hyperactivity ah. disorder. Very similar. Uh, the ADD kid might not focus too well. Might have trouble. Um, might have trouble just just paying attention in school. But they might be the kids that are kind of calm, but still just not really focused too well. The ADHD kid might not be focusing well, and they might be, you know, at the windows and running around and jumping and screaming and yelling. A little bit, just a little bit more hyperactive. Um, so those, that's the basic way you identify one versus the other. And the problem with this is there's no real good definitive test of, of how you can identify the kids on a either a structural, physical level you know, is there something physical that's wrong or is there something chemical that's wrong? You know, you can't, there's, there's no definitive test to say, yes, because of this particular um, neuro, neurotransmitter or because of this particular hormone or because of whatever marker you want to you say, there's no definitive test for any of these. So these are purely behavioral descriptions of how the kid is, is reacting to its environment. Well, there's been a lot of discovery, a lot of discussion about this, trying to figure it all out. You didn't, we didn't have diseases like or, or, or disorders like this, you know, 30, 40 years ago, or at least they weren't identified. Do you think that it's got something to do with uh, the, the ever-moving world, the fast pace that we're all at because of all the electronics, the Internet? You know, like we talked about the, the phone. You didn't, you, didn't, you didn't have your phone Leaving up here. You your here. phone at home. Yeah, you didn't and have your phone. freaking f- out. Yeah, you didn't. Anxiety. A- what, well, yes. let me ask you this. What's the difference between... You know, ADD or anxiety? Not much. Physi- okay. Physiologically, it doesn't seem like there's very much. Uh, anxiety the, the is more, pretty much an adult term more than yeah. anything else. Yeah. And really, there's not a lot of difference between ADD, ADHD, and some of the other spectrum disorders all the way through, on a more extreme cases, Asperger's and, and autism. And now, I don't think that every kid that's been diagnosed with ADD is anything near autism, but it's it is a grayscale. It's a sliding grayscale with with the ADD kid maybe being on the one or two, and the autistic kid being on the nine or ten of the of the spectrum. But it's kind of the same thing. It's just how bad is it? And in an adult, sometimes adults do have the discipline to not you know freak out and jump around and scream and yell all the time. Although I do know some adults that do that. Um, Shut they, up. they oftentimes <laughs> they oftentimes <laughs> do just express more express it more inward. And just kind of eats them up, and, and they might express it as or, or report it more as an anxiety problem. And with that, though, if you keep it inside, your stress levels are probably increased, you know, three, four sure. times. Sure. And the bottom line is in all of these things, all the way from all these spectrum disorders from ADD to, to autism to adult depression and anxiety, oftentimes it's just a simple matter of the brain's not functioning as well as it should. So... A lot of times people think when, when you think in your mind and picture, picture a kid with ADHD, you think, what, what's the first thing you think of? You think of hyperactive, hyper, they're, over, they're overstimulated, mm-hmm. they're overdriven. The strange thing is when you put them on stimulants. Which, always, that's what my question was. I have always wondered mm-hmm. if you're hyper, why are you giving them meth? Yeah. So, you, yeah, the, and that's a great question, and that's, that's, that's uh, tricky to understand at first. Until you understand really what's going on with the brain. They put these kids on stimulants and it calms them down. The stimulant being the Adderall and Ritalin is a stimulant as well? Desoxin. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of those out there. And we'll get to, the, we'll get to some of these and all, some of the problems with some of these drugs no, later on in the show. No, I said myth, but that's kind of what Adderall no, is, isn't it? Uh, well, it's, it's exactly that. Desoxin is methamphetamine. Okay. Right. That's, that's one of the more common drugs as well. Wow. Um, Adderall is a mixed amphetamine. It's not methamphetamine, but it's a mix of different types of amphetamines. Ritalin's completely different. We'll talk about it later. I don't okay. want to. I don't want to spoil it Jump because ahead. because Ritalin is uh, that. That's going to be a very interesting topic when we start discussing what Ritalin is. Unbelievable. But the key here is they're all stimulants to the brain. They all ramp up the brain, and the big, there's a reason for that though. In all of these cases, 
the brain is not hyperactive. The brain function is not hyperactive. It's hypoactive, meaning it's functioning at a very, very low level. It's functioning more poorly than it should. So these stimulants boost it up and actually get the level of brain function back to normal. So the brain, one of the main things that the brain does as far as the frontal lobes of the brain is to calm the person down. And I shouldn't say necessarily calm down in, in, in terms of like calming you down from anxiety, but calming the brain down like um, being able to control your animalistic instincts. You know, we've got this part of the brain. If you look, if you take the, the big, massive gray matter away from our brain, mm-hmm. the rest of our brain basically looks the same as a dog's brain. Mm-hmm. We just have this extra outer layer that's kind of set in, on top of it. That part of the brain is, is unique to human beings, this big, massive frontal lobe. And a big portion of its responsibility is to control or suppress those animalistic instincts, those instincts that, that a dog has or an alligator has. You know, when a dog sees something. They call it the reptile brain, the other yeah, brain part of yeah, the brain. The inside of the mm-hmm. brain, the, the inner core. We have that too, but our frontal lobe says, okay, well, think about what a, what a dog or, or an alligator does. Something shiny, hap- something shiny is uh, in the corner. They have to look at it. Mm-hmm. That's animalistic instincts. Uh, when you punch a dog, it's going to bite you. Or if you just anger a dog, don't punch it. It's going to bite you. If it's hungry, it's going to eat something, whether it's appropriate or not. We have that se- have the same internal instincts in our brain, but we have this frontal lobe that says, "Okay, you're a little bit peeved. They didn't hurt you though, but they're they're kind of kind of making you mad. Don't punch them. Suppress that." That animalistic instinct. Hey, there's a shiny object over there, but you need to focus on the on the the speaker. Don't look at the sh- the shiny object just because there's a, sh- a glare in the window. You don't. We don't have to do that until our brain function starts to decline, and then that animalistic instinct comes out, hmm. and then we b- start behaving basically like an animal. Really interesting stuff. Right. So really. you can take a stimulant. It boosts the function of that frontal brain, frontal lobe, and all of a sudden, then we have the ability to suppress our animalistic instincts. It's, it's this inhibitory or suppressing effect of the human portion of the brain that allows us to not behave like animals or not be overly active and, and, and just jump and look and, and stare and scream, basically act impulsive. And so the, so the, uh, the ADD is, a, is basically a hypoactive brain? Is That's that what, right, yes. Hypoactive, hypo. mean, hypoactive meaning low function. Right, low it's function. Not, it's not a hyperactive brain. And this... You said ADD, but even the ADHD, the hyperactive disorder, is not a hyperactive issue in the brain. It's also a low-functioning Hypo. brain, mm-hmm. hypo-functioning or low-functioning brain, so that you need to somehow boost the function of the brain. And you can do that with stimulants if you want to be a zombie later in life. If you want your kids to be a 25-year-old zombie, you can use those, and they yeah, will work. What, yeah, that's what my next question was, is, is how long does it take for eventually... You know, the kid, the doses will eventually go up and up and up to the fact that to the point where it doesn't affect it anymore. And, and you know, maybe I might be this might be an extreme case, but he's getting addicted to Adderall or, or is it addictive Adderall or of course. Ritalin? Of course. Yeah. Well, and that's then that leads to, OK, now you got to break the addiction. Right. And how long is dependent on the person? Everybody's different. We need to yeah. understand this. We have basic, basically the same wiring and the, basically the same chemistry. The robustness of the individual or the vitality of the individual is different from person to person. So one person might, might uh, get exposed to a certain toxin, and I, I would put these drugs, I would put those in that, that category of toxins. They are somewhat toxic to the brain. And you might have this, this piece of the brain that makes dopamine and adrenaline, and it may be very robust. So you may be able, able to get away with it for quite a while before that part of your brain breaks down. Other individuals might not have a very robust brain and you start adding these stimulants or these toxins to the brain and that part of the brain might break break down very quickly so it's just like two people you know that that start using cocaine one of them takes cocaine is like ah no big deal you know i can take it or leave it you know it's not that big a deal and they just stop whenever they want no no problem the other person starts taking it and they're just hooked well it's they did the same thing but it's the the individual robustness of the two two people kind of determines which one becomes an addict and which one is like, eh, no big deal. I can just do it whenever I want and, and then stop and, you know, not that big a deal. Now you for, said for earlier, it, it, that kind of explains, but, I mean, you said earlier that it's, as far as to diagnose something like that, you can't, like, just take a blood test and, oh, you're ADD. 
the next question is, and I don't know if you want to get into that now or, or later, but how do you, or like your friend Bernie, how do you, do you have to, I mean, is it wise to get a second opinion? Or, you know, as far as knowing your doctor? Because I'm sure doctors have, you know, a different viewpoint on certain th- diagnosis on ADD or ADHD. Well, sure. and my friend believes it's directly related to diet, you know, to the diet and exercise and what kids are exposed to and, you know, just the, the world that we live in now. Is it? Or is it an environment, you know, if you're in a uh, in a city where there's lights and pollution and whatnot, does that have an effect on it? All all true. And here's the, here's the more broad truth. Anything that has a negative effect on the health of the brain is contributing or leading or I should say, I, I sh- maybe I shouldn't say it, but I'm going to go ahead and say causing the, the underlying problem. So anything that affects the brain. Can poor diet affect the brain? Absolutely. You yes. eat a bunch of trans fats, your brain structurally is going to be very poor. If you don't, if you eat a diet with too much sugar in it, um, it could cause inflammation in the brain or could cause too much adrenaline surges in the brain. How about something as simple as video games? Because obviously yeah. kids are video game addicts. That stimulates the brain, but in a different way. Right. Stimulates the brain poorly in a, in a very poor way. And, and actually triggers the stress response or that adrenaline response, which we don't want all the time. Our, our, bodies, our bodies aren't wired to have this constant adrenaline or constant stress response. So lots of things having to do with the brain. We'll cover those all when we get back. All really interesting stuff. You are listening to Dr. Jeremy Webster here on One Life Radio on 1190. You can find him at completehealthdallas.com. That's completehealthdallas.com. 972-735-0707. 972-735-0707. Seven three five zero seven zero seven. We will be back right after the break. You are listening to One Life Radio here on eleven ninety. This is Bernadette with Dr. Jeremy Webster, and our topic today is ADD, ADHD medications, and natural solutions, and. You know, that was fascinating, the explanation that you gave at the last um, last segment about the hypo and hyperactivity. Um, fascinating stuff. But I don't think most people think about it like that. No, of course not, because it's completely paradoxical to, to what you would, you would think. You would think you would need things to calm down, calm down, calm down. And it's absolutely not that way. Otherwise, the medications that are pure stimulants wouldn't be getting... Uh, symptomatic results like they do. Well, yeah, as far as the animal instincts, uh, that just proves that I don't have, I'm not an animal. I don't care, <laughs> Bernie. Just because I'm hungry, I don't eat my turds, so that means that I'm not, I don't have that animal instinct. But what were you doing all morning? Where's my phone? Where's my phone? Where's my phone? Where's my phone? I gotta have my phone. Yeah. I'm a lucky dog, lucky dog, lucky he dog. He had to go get it. He did. He was losing his mind. He's Look, like, I gotta, there's he's, a bone, there's a bone, there's a bone. Throw it, throw it, throw it, throw it. <laughs> he said, he said, he said, damn it, it's happening to me. I need, I forgot my phone. Can you believe it? Oh, there's so, my tail. There's my tail. I'll catch it. I'll catch oh it. Oh my I'll God. Oh. Yeah, you want to talk about greatness. Dogs are awesome. They just are, you know. Well, Cats you know, too. Some, uh, you know, in in a lot of hospitals, Cats especially too, whatever, especially ch- you know, <laughs> especially children's hospitals. You know, they bring by pets to yeah. kind of you know mm-hmm. for you know for for younger patients and whatnot, and and elderly patients. And, and it kind of you know, calms the mind. Uh, speaking of, this is a funny story. Last night I got home from a movie, and as I came in, my cat, my new cat that I adopted, Bounder, as what I named him, and he's just this huge Maine Coon, beautiful cat, and he needed to be out in the country. So I um, brought him out to the country because I have the three and a half acres, you know, out in Sunnyvale. And the man, he, the, the cat comes home with a mouse or a I rat. I could see you with a Shih Tzu and go, you know, you need to be out in the country. <laughs> No, this cat really need to be out in the country. This I cat she was is a. I'm gonna say, and then I never saw the cat again. <laughs> no, this cat is a mouser. Well, so I, now he's taking it up a notch. Last night he brought home a baby dead bunny that he killed, oh. and then massacred on my front. It looked like something out of a movie scene on well, my front didn't mat. We say I don't know if I heard it from from you guys or from a guest that we had, but I've heard that that's basically bringing back. He loves me. Yeah. He's bringing me home some bacon. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and plague. And play. And play. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I was like, oh, man, Founder, did you have to kill a bunny? It was a baby bunny. It was so cute. Well, it's not oh, Easter. It, oh, it was just, he had the guts out and everything. It was bad. It was really bad. Did you really guys hear bad. about the case of plague recently? No. Yeah, there was a kid, and I'm trying to remember whether it was in uh, New York or California. I can't remember where it was, but uh, there w- there was this group of kids. They were out playing. They were out on a on a retreat 
from what I remember. I heard it yesterday, I think. So it's a long That's time all ago. two centuries ago. Yeah, yes, yesterday. My brain's not working so well either, I guess. Um, <laughs> it's contagious. So anyway, <laughs> they were out on a, on a camping phone? trip in the, in the woods, <laughs> and there was a dead squirrel, I believe. And I guess one of the girls kind of got too close. Well, then she started having convulsions and, and seizures, and it's bubonic plague. Really? Yes. Really? Bubonic plague. And where was this? Not Dallas. I can't remember. New Jersey or somewhere oh else. Oh, my gosh. Could, I can't remember where it was. You could contract that that easy? by well, just. she did. Wow. That's well, pretty I'm not, scary. I'm not, a real, I'm not yeah. a real expert on plague. No. We don't get a lot so of... So what do they do? We <laughs> don't spend a lot of time <laughs> studying plague. So, so like, in other words, Universal Studios, when they have a new, uh, you know, uh, uh, a plague movie out, you're not going to be one of the uh, consultants on it? Probably not. Yeah. No. <laughs> there, there's probably like 10 guys in the world that really know a lot about plague. Did that, uh, does that, did that person die, this child? Did she die? Uh, no, I don't believe, I, I believe she's recovering. How do they treat bub- bubonic plague? Like no, you I, said, he doesn't no know idea. much about it. You don't know. Don't, <laughs> don't, you don't know anything when, about don't it. Don't come to me if you have plague. Yikes. <laughs> but oh, she, she is recovering. I would think, well, is it, is it viral? It's got to be viral if she's got, just, she, it has to be. Let, let's not talk about specifics of plague. Yikes. Because yeah. I'm not going to give any good information. Yeah. But she did have a fever of 107. Wow. <laughs> Wait a minute. No, 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 no. I saw that story on the news. I saw that story on the news, and they were shocked. She and the nurse that they were interviewing had to check three times, going 107, mm-hmm. wow. 107. Wow! And yeah, she is living. Yeah, she is fine. But right. you know, that, that's modern medicine. Remind in me to stay away from any squirrels, <clears throat> yeah. dead or alive, exactly. or squir- <laughs> any varmints or squirrely Don't people. With- squirrely. Well, you know, we, and there's a lot of there's what's, a lot of stuff out name? there. Bounder. Don't let Bounder bring any varmints back. Yeah. Yikes! That makes me really nervous. He, he, oh, well, he, don't don't be. You should have seen the mouse the night before. They just keep getting bigger and bigger. Next thing you know, he's going to bring home one of the neighborhood cats or dogs too, or something. He's <laughs> he's he's awesome. He's a hunter. Well, hey, you know, getting back to the ADD and H ADHD, you know, far as it being hard to diagnose or. You know, like I said, can't do it on blood tests or whatnot. Adults, can it be acted, where you know, for them to go and get their Adderall or something like that? You know, we're talking about addiction and Adderall being kind of a form. And I've and I've told you in the past that I've taken Adderall um, from time to time for a workout stimulant. Yeah, I know people yeah. that take it. I know I, friends of mine, girlfriends that take mm-hmm. it to lose weight, um, or people that want to get a lot done. Yeah, because I'm sure it's a form of what. Fin fin and you know well, what was Adderall? What? Yeah, Adderall's a mixed amphetamine. Okay, it's, it's an amphetamine. It's all it is. So my question to you, and this is not a how to get <laughs> how to get your your stimulant drugs, but I mean, can it be acted where someone you know an adult goes in and knowing the right doctor, it's like I think I have you know ADD, adult ADD. Of course, yeah. If you that's if you, scary. If you want, if you want it amphetamine scary. it's it's easy to get well that's scary because there's no way they can't just do a blood draw and say oh well this marker isn't elevated so therefore you don't have it it's not that as i said before it's purely behavioral now there are some tests if you if you really dig into functional neurology you can do things like watch the eyes as you snap your finger on the other side and see if their their eyes try to flicker away from your finger from the, the yeah, finger that, that they're following you can't act i mean and, that's and, and there, there's things like that that you can do but in, I'm going to tell you right now, 90 plus percent of doctors aren't doing anything like that. They're, tell, they're, they're saying, having trouble focusing? Okay, here you go. Here's your script. Yeah, they you do know, that for depression scary. too. You're a little depressed out here. Try some of well, these. Well, and that leads to my next question is, can it be treated holistically? Yes, but going back to what, what really is it? It's depression or, or depressed function of the brain. It's a hypoactive brain. Mm-hmm. So the way you treat it is you improve the function of the brain. And that's a very broad, there. That's a very broad description. It's not something simple. It's Reading, not, it's puzzles, not something stuff like that. Okay, there, there's, there's a piece that's of it. That's the first thing that came into my sure, mind when you said sure. stimulate the brain. Sure, you no, make the brain healthier. Okay, not necessarily just stimulate the brain because, okay. as you said, video games are stimulating the brain, but, but they're stimulating the brain in a bad way that okay. increases adrenaline and could make it does make the the, the symptoms of this hyperactive disorder even worse. But I said improve the function of the brain, make the brain healthier. Well, yes, reading is a good stimulation for the brain. But what if what if the child is eating a high trans fat or a high processed diet 
and they had vaccines as a child and maybe they've even had a flu vaccine, you know, later on. So they got a lot of mercury exposure. So they're, they're toxic. Um, they're, they live in this to- in this polluted city that we live in, although Dallas isn't the worst city around. It's still there's still a lot of pollution it's in the all air. One. The city's yeah. a city. Yeah. The, the, so so you have toxicity and you have a very poor brain uh, structural brain because those trans fats line the the kind of coat the cells of the brain and make the brain not 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 distribute waste and not not absorb n- nutrients properly. And then what if the kid isn't getting enough B vitamins or magnesium or iron or manganese or all these other nutrients? That drive the energy processes of the brain, or so, what we discussed uh, a couple of weeks ago, vitamin D, or vitamin D, or mm-hmm. any other nutrient that the brain needs to be healthy. And so, you said highly processed. You're speaking to about sugar. Sugar being one of the number one, uh, you know, things here that we're yeah. talking about. Yeah, sugar. Sugar alone has been shown in in some of these kids to increase their adrenaline levels, their epinephrine levels, ten times over baseline when you eat a sugary cereal before before school. So that could be the problem with some kids. Sometimes just getting sugar and just getting wheat out of the diet, maybe even just getting milk and serve them a breakfast of eggs and berries and walnuts every single day, sometimes that's enough to calm it down where, where the kid would not even be diagnosed ADD, ADHD. On, in other cases, Danny, there are kids that have eaten so much hydrogenated oil, icing, you know, cake icing and, and uh, Oreos and stuff. They have so much trans fat in their brain that their brain structurally is not healthy anymore. So you have to start giving a lot of good essential fats, fish oils, uh, flax oils, all the, all the good healthy oils that they need to re, basically rebuild or, or do an oil change on their brain so that the, the fluids can move in and out of the brain properly. Sometimes it's just a matter of getting some nutritious food in the kid so the kid's brain can make energy. That goes back to the magnesium and the B vitamins and lipoic acid and things like that. And sometimes it's toxicity. Toxicity will make a brain function poorly. So, okay, you have ADHD, take this nutrient supplement. Well, yeah, that might help if that's exactly the reason why your brain isn't healthy. But what if that's not the reason why your brain's healthy? So we have to figure out, you know, what nutrients are you missing? What toxicity do you have? What essential fatty acids are you missing? On and on and on. And then you can start rebuilding the brain and stimulating the brain properly through exercise and reading and math problems. That's huge, too, because that's what stimulates the brain to grow when it has the nutrients and, and lack of toxic and uh, exposure. What about, obviously, I think I know the answer to I think, obviously, that sounds right, um, sleep. Uh, of course. Well, sleep. And I mean, that, that obvious, you can't concentrate when you don't have enough sleep, and your brain ultimately isn't going to be healthy uh, if you don't have enough sleep. I think Bernadette has a question. Well, I'm just going to show you this picture that I took. Um, yeah. That I took. This is what we're feeding our children uh, at, 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 in the middle of, of, a, of a football game to give them energy to go on. Yeah, Look at that I, I picture. See, I see Oreos, which is hydrogenated oil, uh, Skittles, which has a bunch of red dye and orange dye, a uh, sh- bunch of sugar in the M&Ms, and then a bunch of trans fat in the in the fried potato chips. Right. That's, so you want to make a kid ADHD, give them that. Yeah, just feed them that. And, and, yeah. and then ask them to perform as well. Yeah. You are listening to One Life Radio here on 1190. This is Bernadette with Dr. Jeremy Webster. You can find him at CompleteHealthDallas.com. That's CompleteHealthDallas.com. We will be back right after the break. Welcome back to One Life Radio here on 1190. This is Bernadette with Dr. Jeremy Webster and Danny Miles. Danny, it's so good to have you back in the room there. We missed you on Tuesday. We really did. Oh, I it just you guys. wasn't wasn't the same without you, Danny. I went to a Broadway play. I know. It was fun. And you got actually talked to talk the, to the human in. next so to you. When that thing when that thing comes here to the, the to the Fair Park Music Hall or wherever it would come, gotta go see it. It is hilarious. I, and, and, Book of Mormons. And you know what? You get one body, you get one mind, you get one life, and you get one sense of humor. So work on it. Oh, definitely. And that's <laughs> one of those that, that a few, uh, yeah. What it's, happened? It's, Where's it's, people's it's, sense of humor and sense, uh, that's you know? where, That's why Book of the Mormons, if you don't have a sense of humor, don't go to that because you will be offended. Okay. Because it's by the creators It's by the creators of South Park. Uh, that should pretty much tell you. Well, what the humor level is. is like. did, you, did you see the South Park episode about Book of Mormon? The Book of Mormon, yeah. 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 So it's, it's so, along those same lines? Yeah, and it's just, okay. it's it's pretty funny. Right. But, you know, hey, I got a quick question. You know, we're talking about ADD and ADHD and how it affects the, you know, as far as children and, and, and adults. Where does dementia and Alzheimer's come into play? 
because we're talking about the mind and the brain. Mm-hmm. How does that, I mean... Hopefully when you're really, really old. Well, see, I have a good friend of mine that, and of course my grandmother uh, passed away of Alzheimer's at 99, mind you. Mm -hmm. But I have a good friend of mine, her mother is 87. And she's, she, you know, obviously big time confused right now. And uh, from dementia. And it's like, you know, she's got umpteen thousand pills that she's taken, but it's like, what, you know... Yeah, and that's another one that's that's difficult to diagnose as far as a, from a causal aspect. You know, is it is it really truly Alzheimer's, which which has a uh, physiological definition when you dissect the brain, you can see certain things. These these beta amyloid plaques, uh, neurofibril tangles. Your brain is the 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 connections are are literally winding up on themselves or or just fraying on themselves. Um, so that's easy to detect once you do an autopsy. Or you know a biopsy of the brain, but that's not viable in a living person. Um, so all you're getting really is just behavior. And there's a lot of different types of dementia that that you really can't distinguish between one or the other as far as behavior. There's vascular dementia. You should be able to see some vascular dementia if you do an MRI of the brain and see some some speckling or and things like that. Mm-hmm. Autism, not really. Um, autism, if it's true autism, I, my opinion uh, based on based on the research is that it's purely 100 percent. Um, mercury poisoning, because every single hallmark of, of uh, autism uh, is caused is is something that mercury will cause on the brain, and we don't know of anything else that will cause any uh, any single one of those hallmarks. So it's like it's a perfect match. It's kind of like you know in the NFL with the brain injuries and whatnot. Well, there's a cause for that, right? Um, but just and, and we joke about it as a society. We joke about it. We lose our keys. We lose our uh, glasses. And it's like, oh, we, we forget our best I have friend's Alzheimer's. name. I have Alzheimer's. We, you know? for, we forget our best friend's last name. Well, she's not my best friend. She's <laughs> no. a good friend. We both, we all know a lot of the same people. We forget we, my phone. Oh, we're, yeah. just, we're we, just teasing. I know. <laughs> but, you know, seriously, though, it, it's kind of like we make a joke of it. But then we think, we, when my father passed away a couple years ago, the doctor said he had dementia starting in. Uh-huh. And it's like, okay, now that I look back, yeah, he was later on in life. You know, my mom always said, it's like, I don't know what's wrong with your father. You know, as a joke, he's losing his mind as a joke, but he really was. And just by 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 chance, did he die of heart disease? Or- no, actually, the official death was complications from diabetes. Okay. But he was, that, he was he was not healthy. I mean, case, kidneys it, it failed prob- it and probably everything. probably wasn't. It, it, it's very likely that it wasn't Alzheimer's then. If, it was, if he had diabetes, then very likely it was a vascular-related dementia yeah. rather than a, a mercury, like an Alzheimer's. But, but symptomatically, it's just the same. If yeah. your brain doesn't work well and it starts to, to, de- to uh, erode, then it's just not going to work well, and you're going to have we, you're going to have problems no matter what the underlying cause. Because that's is. the biggest fear for for us is losing our parents. Yeah, and, and alcoholism is the same way. You, you drink, mm-hmm. you can drink yourself stupid too. Um, it, it takes a while. You can do but a lot it, of it things does. to make yourself stupid. Yeah, I mean, there, there's a lot of a lot of toxicity that, that could lead. To that's dementia. why we wake up in the morning going, "Why did I do that? But I'll all, never but, do that again." But do those things also relate to uh, to ADD and ADHD? Absolutely, yes. If you have mercury toxicity, your brain's not going to function. As well as it should. Mm-hmm. So that's one of the things that I always check to see if that's a problem. If it is, that's something that needs to be addressed. Otherwise, you're going to really be fighting an uphill battle forever until you get that toxicity under control. You know, we said it going into the break far as, you know, the know your labels um, and know your labeling. Well, rethink see, about as what a, you're feeding your kids. Th- well, what it is is the labeling, you know, we're attracted by the labeling. Well, they'll say, hey, it's fortified with calcium or it's fortified with this, this. But you don't look at the label. You just look at the labeling by the by what you're buying. Sure. But Package. people don't know what they're, you know, I don't know. I look at this long list of stuff. It says it's healthy. And then I look at the long list of the label and I'm like, going, I have no clue what yeah, I'm looking what at. I, what I always say is don't don't buy things based on the front of the package. Buy it based on the back mm-hmm. of the package or buy things that don't even have a package and you're probably safe. Buy things with only one ingredient. An egg has eggs in it. Lettuce has lettuce in it, etc. cetera. Mm-hmm. Now, also, let's look at labels on other things that we're putting in our body, like the medications that doctors are prescribing. Right. For so that was what's where I was. I, thank you. So I wanted to know. So we, we talked about the 
the common medications for ADD, ADHD. Adderall. We all know what they are. They're Adderall, they're Ritalin. Mm-hmm. We went over the, the Adderall is the methamphetamine. The yeah. Ritalin is the... Uh, Adderall is a mixed amphetamine. Mixed amphetamine, uh, okay. Uh, Desoxin is is the methamphetamine. It's pharmaceutical grade methamphetamine. Uh, Dexedrin is a dextroamphetamine. All of them are similar. They're all, they're all amphetamines. Ritalin, not an amphetamine. It's basically chemically and functionally identical to cocaine. Wow. Th- this is what I say about Ritalin. Ritalin, the only difference between what it does in the body between Ritalin and cocaine is that it enters the bloodstream more slowly. So if you snort a line, a line of cocaine slowly, that's Ritalin. Well, what my it, friend... Get this. It's 20% more potent than cocaine. Wow. Ritalin is. Well, my friend and the listener, Liz, that wanted us to talk about that, that was one of the things that prompted this whole thing, the discussion. She read a, re, uh, a report that, that the, the, about, in, in, ref, in reference to the drugs that we're giving our children for ADHD and, AD, and, and ADD are, are predisposing them almost to drug addiction as adults. Yeah. Yeah. If you're taking something that's basically the same as cocaine, what you're doing is you're flooding your brain with dopamine excessively. That's what happens with cocaine. That's what happens with Ritalin. And you are going to develop problems. You're going to you're going to develop one. You're going to develop problems with resistance to all that dopamine. So the dopamine's not going to have as much function, or it's not going to work as well. Kind of like insulin resistance. Kind of like if you walk into a room and it smells real funny, and after 20 minutes you don't smell it anymore, you become resistant to that. You no longer have the sensitivity. In other words, that smell doesn't work as well to your in your smell receptors. The other thing is, what if you're f- forcing your brain to make too much of this chemical? For too long, and you do this for years and years and years, you could burn out that center, that, mm-hmm. that substantia nigra, and not produce dopamine or not to produce the, the metabolite of that, which is adrenaline. You might not be able to produce those chemicals anymore when you get older and you start to get off these medications. And now you don't have ADD, but you have zombieism. You're just a, a zombie. Which and that's is the really problems. scary. That's the problems with these medications. These kids that start taking these when they're 10 years old, by the time they're 25, they can't even hardly function. So what are some of the natural solutions? You know, what, what, can we, what, what are some of those that can help the children with ADD or ADHD? Right. Well, what I do in my office is I, I don't try to identify the ADD or ADHD. What I try to identify is what's in, influencing your health. If it's out of balance, we fix it. So in other words, if we find some B vitamin deficiencies, could B vitamins have an impact on your brain health? Well, yes, of course they can. B vitamins are required for your brain cells to make energy. If you can't make energy, your brain's not going to function well. And so, your central nervous system as well. Exactly, right? exactly. So if I find a B vitamin deficiency, we correct that. If I find a magnesium deficiency, we correct that. If I find toxic metal issues, too much mercury, too much arsenic, too much cadmium, too much lead, if I find those things, we know that can negatively affect the brain. So we fix that. If the kid's a couch potato, I get him out exercising so he can do the proper stimulation for the brain. Get him off the, get him off the Game Boys and the, and the video games because that's the wrong type of stimulation. It's also encouraging very poor neck posture, which doesn't allow proper signaling to the brain from the neck joints. Mm-hmm. So it's like you've got to figure out what's going on. I also look at like it's some, some nutrients that have to do with energy production in the brain other than just vitamins and minerals. Acetyl L-carnitine is important. It helps you transport fat into the brain so you can use it for energy. And it seems to work really well for kids that don't function too well. I also look at structural things. I mentioned the trans fats, the the hydrogenated oils from processed foods, infiltrating the brain and creating this brain. Well, we need to stop that and start getting fish oils. We still need to get things like phosphatidylserine, uh, glycerophosphocholine, which are the lipids that line your brain cells. And so that we can have nice fluid exchange Nutrients can get in in the brain cells, and toxins can lead the brain cells rather than the stiff trans fat brain that happens from eating all this processed foods. We need to protect the brain. Ginkgo is wonderful per, for protecting the brain. It's an antioxidant. Uh, but we also need to look at your other antioxidants, your CoQ10, your vitamin C. Those things are just basic things that can offer protection uh, for the brain. Lipoic acid can also offer energy and antioxidant protection for the brain. I'm so, so I just bad. rattled I'm off so a lot bad. of things. I'm so bad. This is as complicated as dating in yeah, Dallas. Well, it's, foot, it's football weekend, <laughs> and I'm going to be... And speaking I'm of be which, damaging some brain cells Sunday. Man, what a great weekend! And you know what? And <laughs> and I was thinking about this as you were talking because we're almost ready to wrap it up here. You know, uh, you get you get one body, you get one mind, you get one life, and you only get this next. Well, not only you, this next weekend, this weekend that we're entering into into right now 
it could be our last weekend. It could be your last weekend, my last weekend. You never know. So make the most of it. Get out there. Do something awesome. Do something you enjoy. Do something for Bucket somebody list. else. Bucket something. List. Just something. Get out there and make it a better world. Make it a better weekend. It might be your last. Gosh. One love.